Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us today for episode 2 of 3D Printing Thursdays. This is Jesse Hallward, 3D Printing Application Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and a big part of my position is teaching customers how to get the most out of their hardware and software. While iGERV is absolutely easy to pick up and learn, there are still a few less commonly used functions that can definitely enhance the user experience. So in today's episode, I'm going to be going over a few iGER tips and tricks that maybe you weren't fully aware of before. Now let's get started. The first set of tips I'll go over are related to organizing your Iger library, because who wants a messy file set, right? For this, I'm going to start off with the example of the phone stand file that we uploaded and sliced during the intro. You may have noticed that this part is currently set to use precise PLA for the purpose of prototyping the part. The print turned out good, so now I want to move on to Onyx for a better surface finish and stiffness in the final product. Now, my first thought might be to come in here to the part view and change the material to onyx, re-slice it, and then send that to the printer. The problem is that what if I want to eventually print this in PLA again? Or what if I wanted to have an onyx-only version and an onyx plus continuous fiber version? I would need to come in here each time I wanted to use a different material and re-slice the part. This brings us to our first tip, which is to utilize the copy part functionality. From the part view, I can simply click copy part, which lets me create a new version of this file in Iger that is completely independent of my original. So for this particular example, I have changed the name of this file to better identify it down the line. And after saving the part and waiting for a few seconds, have fully set it up for printing in Onyx. If we go back to our library, you can see that both versions of this part are easily accessible here. Since copies do not impact original uploads, they are a great way to make your own slicer changes to a part that a colleague has uploaded as well. You also don't even need to open the file itself to start the copying process, as you can access the same option by clicking on the ellipsis on any part in the library. Okay, so that's all fine, but as I'm sure you can imagine, any Iger library can become a bit hard to navigate with multiple part versions, users, or ongoing projects. This brings us to our next tip, which is to utilize folders for organizing parts. This one is simple to get started, as all we need to do is click on Create Folder in the library. You can name this folder whatever you want, and when you're done, just confirm that you want to make the folder, which will take you to the super interesting empty folder that you just made. From here, you can select Add Part to select as many parts as you want to move to the folder. If you don't want to scroll for your part, you can always search for it using the field here. Once you're done, confirm the move and your parts will be placed in the folder. You can even take this one step further by creating a subfolder, which is done by selecting the ellipsis icon, clicking on the create subfolder option in this menu, and then naming this second level folder whatever you want. From here, the workflow is identical for adding parts. Subfolders are extremely useful for different revs, material setups, or even orientations. You can also move parts from the top level library by either selecting the move option under the menu for any one part, or by selecting multiple parts at a time, like so, and then clicking move parts, which is under the library ellipsis icon. Doing either of these options will let you search for the folder you want to move parts to. As you can see, we have our phone stands, all nice and organized now. Alright, so organizing files is great, but Iger is still a collaborative software, so what if you share your Iger organization with the digital equivalent of a messy roommate? Well, this can be a great use case for the filters dropdown. Once you type a name or names into this field, the library will only visibly show parts that were uploaded by those users. Out of sight, out of mind. Okay, so enough about folders. Let's move on to our next segment, which will be more focused on ongoing projects and parts that are not finished or still being prototyped. To illustrate this one, I've opened a CMM fixture, which was originally machined. Most of this part is ready to go, but in the second rev, some overhangs were redesigned to avoid the need for supports. Uploading the new file as a separate Iger part is totally valid, but if you don't want anyone to accidentally print old versions, then using the update STL selection for any part is a great option. 
This allows me to select my updated STL, set the orientation and materials to whatever I want for the next print, and then slice it to save this change. While this is extremely useful, especially for geometry updates, it's definitely possible that a user might want to roll back to an old version. To do this, all they would need to do is open the version dropdown here on the left in the part view and select revert for whatever rev they want to go back to. So no worries if you accidentally selected the wrong file when updating. For this next set of tips, I'm going to go over a small number of part settings and how they can quickly change things for your prints. The first setting I'll go over here is fairly new as of this video, and this is the stagger seams toggle. With extrusion-based printing systems, each layer will start and stop at a specific point, and this can show up as one continuous vertical line on your part. If this interferes with your part's function, then you can use the stagger seams option to randomize the start-stop points of each layer. This could be mistaken as a print defect, so it will be up to the user to determine how they want their part to appear cosmetically. There are some other items such as turbo infill and turbo supports here as well, which will print their respective areas a bit faster if enabled. Both of these features are currently still being developed, and unless your part has an extremely large amount of support material, the turbo supports option doesn't usually have a huge impact on print time. As always, you'll save a lot more time by redesigning or reorienting parts to remove the need for support structures. That being said, you can definitely use these test features to get a feel for them if desired. Since we have fiber enabled, we can lastly access our reinforcement page, which lets us access some general fiber controls. The total fiber layer slider actually splits the number shown in half and places them at the top and bottom of your part in a sandwich panel configuration. If you want to increase this number, keep in mind that it is not consecutive layers, but a split. Okay, so we're going to slice this part, which will let us access the internal view of it, showing all of our pathing and fiber setup. This will bring us to our final set of tips and tricks for the day, which overviews how to more easily set up custom fiber groups. Now, as some of you may already know, you can use the 2D view, selectable in the upper right hand corner of this page, to navigate each of your layers and see how they will print. But what is less commonly known is that you can also use this view to make it easier to set up custom groups of fiber exactly where you want them to start and stop. Just so you don't have to take my word for it, I'm going to set up a custom group of fiber to support the surface that will hold our Metal X printed socket insert. I want this group to essentially run the entire height of this feature, but I also want to keep the two fiber panels that I have set up on the top and bottom of my part for strength in the handle. To get started with this, I'm going to disable the representation of both roof and floor layers, as well as infill pathing by clicking the display icon next to each of these. Using these functions under the advanced dropdown here can make certain items a lot easier to see and modify. With our display cleaned up a bit, I'm going to start setting up a custom group that starts four layers after our bottom group of fiber and begins four layers before our top group. This gives enough area for a few layers of solid plastic between each of those groups. So, using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I manually navigate four layers past my initial fibers, and when I'm where I want to be, I press the F key to enable fiber for that layer. When I have that done, I do the same for my top grouping so that these will be evenly spaced on the top and bottom of the part. Now I'm ready to fully set up my custom group. Switching back to my 3D view, I can use the single layers I just enabled as markers of a sort to know exactly where I place fiber. You can always just set up a custom group in the three-dimensional view and change it after the fact, but doing it this way lets you be as exact as you want or need to be. Like I brought up earlier, the purpose of this group is to provide strength for the metal component that will insert after printing. So with this new custom group, I will set the fiber fill type to concentric, as well as change the reinforcement area to inner holes only.
once the group is created, you can see that the original fiber panels are still here. And if we go back to the 2D view again, we can look at our new custom group. Like I mentioned earlier, enabling single fiber layers in the 2D view can be really helpful for accurately reinforcing specific features or areas of your part. If you would like to learn more about fiber reinforcement strategies, feel free to watch our video on the subject using the link in the description. Thanks for taking the time to watch our 3D Printing Thursdays Iger Tips and Tricks video. I hope that these tips have been useful and that they help enhance your MarkForge experience. Let us know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see, and stay tuned for future episodes. Happy printing, everyone.